So you just picked up a brand new Synology NAS for your home lab, but not entirely sure how to connect it to your ESXi hosts. Well, you've come to the right place, because I'm going to show you step by step how it's done. Now there are two different storage protocols we can use to connect the Synology NAS to our ESXi hosts. There's NFS, and then there's iSCSI. NFS is a file level protocol like what you'd see in a typical Windows share, whereas iSCSI is a block level protocol used in enterprise storage arrays. We're going to focus on iSCSI today, but the beauty of the Synology NAS is you don't really have to decide, you could just use them both. Synology offers a number of NAS solutions that support iSCSI, from the inexpensive 2-disc DS216 model, all the way up to the massive 12-disc DS2415+. Plus. But you already have a Synology with iSCSI, that's why you're here, so let's get started. Log into your Synology NAS and open up the Storage Manager. Click on iSCSI Target and Create. Now because this target's going to be talking to my VMware hosts, I'll call it VMware. Leave the IQN as it is. Now let's take a minute to talk about CHAP. CHAP stands for Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. By enabling CHAP, your ESXi host has to authenticate to the Synology NAS. Enabling mutual CHAP means that the Synology NAS then in turn has to authenticate with your ESXi hosts. Now, because this is a home lab, I'm not terribly concerned about having this level of security, so I'm going to leave this unchecked, and we'll click Next. I don't have any iSCSI ones created yet, so this wizard will walk us through creating one right now. We have a couple of different options on how to create an iSCSI one. There's a file level, and then there's a block level. The biggest difference being that a file level one can be thin provisioned. But the downside is it has to live on a volume, so that means we need to manage the volume's capacity as well as the LUN's capacity. But I want to keep things a little bit simpler in my lab, and I want to dedicate storage for this use. So I'm going to select a block level LUN, and I'm going to call this SYNDS01. This is the same name that I'm going to give to the data store. Let's click Next. Select a disk group. I only have one available. And let's allocate a size. I'm going to say 1000 gigs. We can always expand this later. Let's review everything. Looks good. Click apply. Great! Our target and our LUN are created. Now I'm going to be using multiple hosts to connect to this LUN. So in order to enable that, let's click on edit, go to advanced, and allow multiple sessions from one or more iSCSI initiators. Click OK. And that's it. Let's move over to the vCenter and start configuring our hosts. Let's select the first host. Click Configure. Select Storage Adapters. And let's add a new adapter. Select Software iSCSI Adapter. Click OK. And we've created a new iSCSI software adapter. Now select the new iSCSI adapter and select Targets. My Synology target's been automatically discovered, which is great. Hopefully yours is too. If not, select Static Discovery and enter the IP address and iSCSI target name of yours. Now click on Storage Devices and Rescan. Click OK. And check it out! Our iSCSI LUN is now available. Repeat these steps on all of your other hosts. And once again, there's our LUN. Select either a host or the entire cluster. Select Storage, New Data Store. 
select VMFS. And let's name this SYN ES01, just like we did when we named the LUN. Select the host. Select your Synology iSCSI disk. Click Next. Use all available space and click Next. This looks good. Let's click Finish. And there you have it. Click on Data Stores, and there it is, SYNDS01. Yours might show as unmounted, but don't worry, it'll take a few seconds for it to mount. And now we're free to start migrating some of our VMs to the new data store. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. I'm Matt Bradford of VMSpot.